Okay, last week we did the first 10 lines of Ashray and we're using this same page. And uh, last week I started off by asking you a question. Uh, I asked you to describe someone you admired and people gave me all kinds of interesting adjectives. And then I asked, where is your happy place? Because Ashray means happy. Ashray Yoshve Vetecha, happy are those who dwell in your house. And so it goes on to say that happy are those who will, who come to shul, um, and that's what the house is. All right, so this is a happy prayer. And uh, it's actually divided into two sections. And on the copy that I gave you, you have the first 10 lines, and then there's a little space, and then the second half. And on uh, there's Beryl. Hi, Beryl. Hi there. Good. What Good. are we Great. Doing? So, um, the first part is uh, where the, the it's the, every line is divided into. Does somebody have their another device on? Because I'm hearing a repetition. Anyone have a phone yeah, on? on? Okay. This one's up twice on the screen, so she maybe has more than one open. I see her face. I also see her name in a separate window. Who is that? Beryl. Yeah, Beryl. I can't, I can't get, get my camera to work. What no, your that? camera's working, but you're echoing. I you know. You have it twice. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go out and come back in. in. All right, good. Okay. So anyway, the, um, the first half of the prayer, as I said last week, talks about praising God. If we're happy, we're happy because we are in God's house and in good graces with God. And so every line in the first 10 lines is divided and it's divided by a comma. And the first part of the line says what the second, the second part of the line of the verse echoes what the first part says. So um, however, however God is being praised and I showed there were a whole lot of synonyms. It says like in the first part, in the first line, um, uh, uh, I will put on high, I will praise God, the king, and then and I will bless your name forever and ever. So praise and bless. And then we have uh, your works and your mighty acts, your glory and your wondrous deeds. And so that goes all the way down from lines one to two. Now, actually, um, Psalm 145 starts with, with Aramimcha. Uh, Tihilalu David simply means a Psalm of David, King David. And the first two lines, Ashrei Yoshevei Vetecha, and then Ashrei Ha'am Shekach those, that comes from another Psalm. That's like a little introductory theme, uh, two lines. So now, the second half, we're not gonna see so many words with Ha, we're not going to be describing so much God's attributes and qualities and praising, but we're turning the coin on the other side. And as I'll show you, it's what God does for us. The first part, we praise God. And the second part says how God cares for us. And it's pretty concrete. And it's, and it's very um, uplifting. So I guess Ashray, this, this is a happy, <laughs> this is a very happy prayer. But I wanted to start off uh, with a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to ask you the question, who is happy? Who is a happy person? And there is in, um, I think it's in the Talmud, and I'll, and I'll give you the answer that the rabbis suggested. But can you tell me, in your opinion, who's a happy person? Linda, who's a happy person? You mean in the Bible or? I mean, personally, who do you consider a happy person? I think my daughter is very happy. Her name is Joy. And everyone tells me I named her appropriately. She's <laughs> always up and will always look on the bright side of anything. All right, an optimist. Sherry Lynn, who's happy in your opinion? Who is a happy person? I think my husband is very happy. I think he he's just involved in so many different things and he has a very bright outlook on life. Good. Helene? Um, 
Well, I think in general, people that feel blessed and appreciate mm -hmm. what they have are happy people. And I'm thinking of my late husband, Rabbi Michael Kane, who um, really exemplified that. He was happy all the time. He woke up singing every morning. <laughs> he sang all the time. Wonderful. That's great. Sherry Stein? I was going to say, um, both my husband and I are happy people. I think, especially through all of this, if you keep busy, mm -hmm. you know, you have lots of things to do. We, we are blessed with grandchildren. You know, life is as is good. Very, good. Very nice. Cheryl? You know, and I'm kind of like Helene, I think of it more in, in the general sense. And I think that the, the people who are happy are people who are not dependent on the externalities to drive their happiness, but they, they, they bring it's from inside. There's, there's a joy that's inside of them that is not dependent on what's happening to them. It's hmm. not situational. Interior, an interior happiness. Mm -hmm. Beryl? Well, I missed the question because I finally the question just got is, back. Who is happy? And thank you for coming back in because there's no more echo now. Who is a happy person? Who is a happy person? I, I think people who are satisfied, that feel that their life is full. You know, I know I... I I thank God continually for my bl the blessings I do have. Um, I used to sometimes feel jealous and it didn't make me happy. So I learned to be satisfied with my life and count my blessings because there are many. Um, I mean, I'm married almost 55 years. And I'm, you know, I, I love my husband and we're happy. We have grandchildren, not as many as we'd like, but you know, you can't, <laughs> you take it. Counts. <laughs> well, cause my younger son and his wife don't have children. They can't. And they, at one time. Uh, we, we, have, we have a similar situation and yet I know, have five grandchildren. So, but you know, but they're, they're satisfied. They have wonderful nephews on both sides of their family so you know everybody in you know we've been blessed um the, everybody is happy and well and you know not everything is a hundred percent but we have enough that we know that we have more than others and and that's enough for us. I mean, my, my, my one complaint now is that my grandchildren are so far away from me um, yeah. and that I can't see them more regularly. I think a lot of people have that, that uh, same, same feeling. But right, let's on, move on to, thank you. On that, at Rita. that point though, there are ones that have them further away. So I'm blessed. They're, yeah, they're and all, some they're don't have the any and, and some, some right. people don't have any grandchildren and their kids yeah. are married and so. Rhoda, hello, Rhoda. Who is a happy person? I, you know, I really can't think of anybody that's really happy all the time. I, I, no. I don't think it's possible. I didn't, say, I didn't say all the time, but just um, in general, a happy I, 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 I wish I, well, you know, I, uh, to me, a person that's going to have the possibility of being happy is someone that is very grateful and someone that looks at the world, it's a, it's a glass that's half full and half em versus half empty. And you have to have a positive attitude. And, and I think that yeah. um, I really can't say one individual that's happy all the time. I know that we all have our moments. Yeah. Okay. So I have a friend at synagogue who always calls me Mary Poppins. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> and I say, why, why, that too. <laughs> why do you <laughs> call me that? She said, because you, you always seem to have um, a positive attitude. And, and I think that's what gives you the inner strength that you were talking about. Um, this is what the rabbis say, and somebody hit on it. 
I think I don't remember who it was. It might have been Cheryl. And the rabbis say, Miha Yesha Share. And it and it says, the one who's happy is he who wants what he has, not has what he wants. In other yeah. words, happy um asher bechelko, happy with his portion. And Beryl was stating that very clearly. Mm -hmm. Happy with what you have, not not dwelling on what you don't have. If you have good health, if you have a good family, uh, if it's grandchildren that 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 make you happy, uh, monetary independence. I would say, what makes me happy is the uh, ability to be able to help others. Uh, in particular, I teach immigrant uh, Latino women, and that gives me a tremendous amount of satisfaction. And I do that for the local BOCES. And so teaching ESL, when I'm in the class, when I'm in the classroom, it's like I forget everything else. If I don't feel well or I have a problem and I'm so focused on them that everything else melts away. And I feel very, when I finish a class, I feel very satisfied inside of me. Like you said, an interior a happiness inside. So it's so when the rabbi said, he who wants what he has, whatever life has dealt you, you're able to accommodate yourself to it and and you you accept it. I guess that's happy. And but not a person who has all the material things that they want. I want this, I want that, I want that. And so it's not about wanting all kinds of exterior things, but having what liking and loving what you have, whether it's your husband or your home or your financial situation or whatever, your job. So I, I think that now in this um, second part of, of Ashrei, it says what God can do for us. And as we go through the prayer, you're going to see the things that it actually outlines it. And I, I sat down and I outlined it. I looked at the verses and I said, wow. And I came up with um seven eight items that come from the second part. Okay, um, in terms of Hebrew, I would like you to look at the first part of Ashrei. And I um, want you to tell me, just skim, there are three lines that do not have any cha words, that do not end in the suffix cha. Can you locate those three lines? Starting yeah. with, with the very, very top, no, starting, starting with line one, starting with Aromimcha all the way down to Yodukha. Oh, okay. Which lines do not have a Cha word in it? The third. Uh, the, the, I don't know. I laugh, but the rest of the line the doesn't. Third, the third, third one. Yeah, the, the next third one. The last. Good. The third nine. one has no Cha word in it. That's one of them. And then there's two more. Line eight and line nine. Correct, line eight and nine. Who said that? That was very good. Cheryl, very good. So those three lines. However, we do have lots of words that we were dwelling on last week. And um, I said that if it's an action word, if it's a verb, and there's cha on the end, it means you. For example, aromim cha, I will elevate you. And the interesting thing again is that when the words end in ha, we know that this is very intimate prayer because we're talking to God. The ha is a masculine ending and it refers to God. So that's interesting. If it's a noun like shame, which is name, and it says shimcha or shemcha, that means your, your name, shemcha, or um, beitecha, beitecha, your house. Okay, so ha with a verb is you, speaking to you. And, and the ha with a noun means your possessive. Okay, so let's go through. I want you to repeat after me some of those ha words that are in the first part of the prayer, and then we'll tackle the second part, okay? So online one, aromimcha. Aromimcha. Shimcha. 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 That's, those are both on line one. Okay, going down to line four. Oh, Ma'asecha. Ma'asecha. Ma also on line four. Ugevu rotecha. 
Yeah, there is a dot on the race because it's always a constant in the Okay, going to line five, we have the word hodecha. And also on line five, niflo techa. Okay, nifla, if a little kid says, Oh, Zen Nifla, oh, if you gave them a really nice present, Nifla means wonderful. And Niflotecha means your wonderfulness. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, in line six, Norotecha. Norotecha. That means your awesomeness. And then again on line six, Ugedulatecha. Ugedulatecha. Going on to line seven, a little word, tuvcha. Tuvcha. Tov means good. Tuvcha means your goodness. Remember, all these words are praising God. Again, um, on line seven, v'tzid katecha. V'tzid katecha. Right. Um, you know what tzedakah is, like your charitableness, your generousness. Okay, eight and nine don't have any ha words. And the last one in this group, in line 10, Yoducha. Then there's a, there's a repetition, Ma'asecha. Ma'asecha. Which means your deeds, your works. And then we have Vachasidecha. Vachasidecha. Okay, so I just want to say that um, Hasidim, the Hasidic people, Hasidim, my son in law, who's one of them, he's Lubavitch. Um, means you're faithful ones. Hasidim is faithful ones, okay? And um, when we talk about the, the, the um, Hasidim, in fact, I just have a book on the Baal Shem Tov that I got from my son-in-law for Hanukkah, so I guess I have to read it. <laughs> so the Hasidim, the faithful ones, or sometimes they're called the pious ones, okay? The true believers, in other words, the, the real Hazak believers. Okay, now, so as we go into the second part, I'm going to go over the ha words with you again. And if you want to, um, on your paper, what I did was I started with 11 and I numbered the lines to 23. So if you want to number the second half, then we can have um, a way to refer to the lines that we all can have together. So on... That would make it line 11, and the first I word is to vote. What? I don't get 23. You don't get line three? 23. I just oh. tried numbering them. So 11, okay, the box 11. With 11 starting with uh, Kavod. 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 Okay. okay. Kavod. And then... Um, that will go down to 23. The box is 21, and then there's 22 okay. and 23. All right, yes, 23. That's where I was okay. okay. Okay, so if you number them, then we all have um, the same way to refer to the lines. Okay, so now the first the first line in that set whole second group, Kavod, and the uh, word is Malchutecha. Malchutecha. All right, now, since you're so advanced, I'm going to ask you, what word Looks like Malchutecha. Malchut. Look in the middle. Malk. Melch. Melech. Who said Melech? Melech. I did. Okay, yeah. Beryl, you get the star. You get a gold star. <laughs> okay, so Malchutecha, that word is based on the root Melech. Melech. And the word means you can't say your king, it's your kingship. Your kingship. Of course, it's speaking to God. Your king, Malchutecha. You have the Cha on the end. It's a noun, Malchut. And Malchut means kingship. And the Cha means your, your kingship. Kavod. We talked about the expression Kol HaKavod. What does Kol HaKavod mean? Sherry, you should, you probably know that. You've heard it, Sherry Lynn. When, uh, when someone reads from the Torah and they say Kol HaKavod. It's like. What I want to say, um, with all the honor, exactly honor, kavod, 
And like uh, in the Ten Commandments, which we're coming to um, tomorrow, kabed et avicha v'yedimecha. Respect, honor your father and mother. Okay, kabed. So kavod is from that. It means honor your kingship. Kavod, your kingship is honored. Okay, on line 12, there is no word with ha. So let's skip to line 13. And then we have um, on 13... Oh, somebody's calling me. Hold on, we just. Okay, so um, on line thirteen, we have again Malchutacha, but the new word is Umem Shaltacha. Five syllables. That's a mouthful. Right. Okay. So mem shalah, when you um in Israel, when they talk about the mem shalah, whether they like it or not, it means the government. So mem shaltacha means your reign or your governing. Okay, so it's Malchutacha talking about your kingship. And then it says, Umem Shaltacha, your governing, your reign. Bechol Dor Vador. What does Dor Vador mean? Generation. 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 And your reign in every generation, in your reign um, in all generation to generation. So God's reign. For, this for is so generation. helpful because in the book, I'm, I'm reading from, from the book in the English translation, it says dominion. Uses yeah, well, dominion, kingship, your reign, it's all related. Yeah, your rule. Dominion means your rule. Dominance. Okay. Again, I'm going to tell you that I checked out Alev Shalem and Sim Shalom, and then the, the translation book that I have, and there's different translations in all three books. And the translations in some of these prayer books are a little far-fetched. They are not true translations. They try to put it in, in poetic terms. So when you, you look at it, they juggle the words around so that you really can't, even if you're pretty good at translation, you can't figure it out, but I can figure it out. And I see, and the same thing when you read the Torah. Once you get proficient in reading Hebrew, when you look at the Torah, it changes completely the meaning sometimes. It just, it's not exactly what it says, okay? So it's like you gave it to a translator and they did a lousy translation. And that's what I find. Then I get upset with it, but I can't change it. Okay, um, now we go to line 15. 14 doesn't have any of the how words. 15, you have the third word. It says, ene hol elecha. It says, Ene, your, your, not your eyes are always towards you. So, Elecha, towards you. Okay. El in Hebrew means two. Elal means two, two above, the, the, to the skies. Oh, so that's Elecha. Say it. Elecha. 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 Very good. Elecha. Elecha. Now, in line 16, we have a little word. The third word it says poteach et yadecha. Who knows what the word yad means? Have you ever seen a yad? It's an object. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a hand. pointer. It's the pointer. Okay, and it, it is attached to your body. It means your it's hand. Hand. And it is also the pointer for reading Torah, okay. right? The yad, and they call it the yad, and yad means hand. And that's what it is. So yadecha means your hand. Rhoda? Yeah, I'm a little bit lost. I must be honest with you. I, I, I must have them numbered incorrectly. And I'm not now the first the second portion starts with number four. What what number are you starting the second portion with? Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, because the first the first section of the Ashray prayer started with Aramimcha and it went to Yoducha, and those were ten lines. Okay. So Kavod was 11, and Lahodia is 12, and Malchutecha, 13, Somech is 14, and we're up okay, to 15. Okay, so 23. Okay. Good, All right. good. Thank you very okay. much. So good, no problem. Yadecha, 
it's your in your hand. Okay, um, so my cantor, Alava Shalom, uh, uh, our previous cantor, always when he was on the beam and he said that uh, line, Elecha, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Poteach Ed Yadecha, he would open his hand. It's like God is opening his hand to the poor, to the downtrodden, because the eyes of Poteach opens Ed Yad, he opens his hand. Okay, I don't know if you've ever seen anybody do that, but I do that subconsciously when I'm reading Ashray and I open my hand in, in, in his uh, honor. Okay, so Yadecha is on line 16. Now, the next two long, the next three lines, 17, 18, and 19, do not have Cha words, nor does 20, nor do the rest. So we've gone through all the Cha words, and we're going to just take a quick run through those words again, okay? All right, these are the Acha words. So there's not as many. And the reason is we're not praising God's attributes. We're not saying you are this and you are that. Okay, we're not using, um, we're not using words that, that say uh, you do this and you do that. Um, okay, uh, so um, Mal, okay, let's go back. Malchutacha. Malchutacha. Mem Shaltacha, Mem Shaltacha, Elecha, Yadecha, Yadecha. And that's it. I only had one, two, three, I only had four words in this section which have Cha. Okay, um, now, and I'm going to have you read um, Ashray. I'm going to have enough time for everyone to take a line. I just, uh, in terms of the meaning of what God does for us, I'm going to just do very quickly. I'm going to go through it with you. Um, on line 14, so mech Adonai lechol hanoflim v'zokev lechol hakafufim. That that must sound to you like gibberish, but it means um, God supports the fallen and lifts up all who are bent down. So I was going to ask you what you and in several translations they say bent down. So how you interpret that? I'll say it again. God supports the fallen and lifts up all who are bent down. So who would you consider in the group of being bent down? When we pray, when we say Kaddish, we bend down. All right, you're talking about you're taking it, the, the you're taking it the physically like, like bowing down. I'm taking it a little more I philosophical. Think, Le I, Linda? I think he means those who are bent down with problems mm -hmm. and troubles of the world. Mm -hmm. Oppressed, they, like oppressed. Yeah, they can't, they're short of money, they're short of food. He, he'll help them, he'll lift them up. Right, even if it's just spiritually and giving somebody hope that things will get better. Mm -hmm. Think of all the people who are affected with COVID certainly their spirits must have been down and they must have been praying to God for good health. I wasn't feeling well the last two days. I had a pinched nerve in my neck and I didn't go to work yesterday. And when I got up and I couldn't move my head, I didn't feel very, very good. And I wondered how long is this going to be? I won't be able to drive and whatever. Right, good interpretation. Now, the second thing where God cares for us is on line 15. And ochel is food, and this talks about you give us food. Well, does it mean real food? Can it manna? be taken in? Manna from heaven. Well, there's manna. You're taking it again in a, in a literal sense. But today, in 2022, we don't get manna from heaven. No, is there but when any this other way? Well, this, no, this was manna from heaven. That's biblical. But okay. this was that that was the only time the manna supposed to have come down on on the uh route to the promised land. Food, but food, food what kind of brain food? things to think about? Okay, it's spiritual nourishment. Like spiritual spirit. nourishment. I was thinking, I was thinking spiritual yeah. nourishment. Good. Yeah. Spiritual yeah. nourishment. 
So it's not really food. No one's knocking on my door and saying, here's some food. God just send you a food package. It just <laughs> drops down in a little parachute like in World War II, you know, like the aid package. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go out and take this bundle that came literally. I think it's spiritual and, and mental nourishment. I think that would be a, a good translation. Line 16. Poteach et yadecha umaspia that says you satisfy with contentment all that lives. That is self-explanatory. You satisfy with contentment. The person who is, who is happy, I ask, who is happy? The person who feels contentment. Content with what you have, okay? I don't live in a mansion, but I love my house. And a lot of you express that your favorite place is your house. You, I'm you love looking your at house. the tra translation in the Sidur Shalem that I have, and mm -hmm. uh, the Sim Shalem, and there's nothing even here <laughs> that I can relate to what you're saying the translation <laughs> is. And I think what it is, it so should be, if I'm counting lines right, you are just in every way loving in every gesture. And that's what you are. No, that's the next line. That's the next line. I was on line 16, the one that says Poteach. Poteach, yeah, but Poteach is opens. This is the one about opening his hand to everybody. So 16. you are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you with integrity. Is that what, That's what it Poteach? said? Poteach et yadecha umaspia lechokhaira, and you satisfy all living, the desires of all living. That's what it says. You satisfy with contentment all living. That's what potea. You're opening your hand to everyone and you satisfy their ratzon is their desire. You satisfy their desires. Kol chai is all those who are living. Which means animals too, by the way. <laughs> all right, the next line is the one you're thinking of, 17. Sadiq Adonai bechol derachav bechasid bechol ma'asav. Sadiq, God is just, God's a, uh, the big tzedek, the tzaddik like tzaddik. Uh, like like the Baal Shem Tov, tzaddik Adonai bechol derachav in all his ways, the chasid and and faithful bechol ma'asav, and uh, and just in all his God is just in all his ways and benevolent in his deeds the chasid bechol ma'asav in all his works and and. Uh, yeah, benevolent is good in all his deeds and all his works. That was 17. Okay, so he's just, he's kind, he nourishes us, he supports us when we're down. This is pretty nice qualities. Um, line 18. Karov, karov means close. Karov adonai l'chol korav. God is close to all who call. L'chol asher yekra'u chul ve'emet. All who... Emet means truth. All who call upon him in truth is close to you. In other words, if you pray, you're close to God. And, and, and hopefully God listens to prayers. Line 19. Um, 19. And this is one I want to ask you about because the translation is questionable. I found uh, different translations. The will of those who fear him he fulfills and rescues. So the word yureyav, ritzon yureyav, yureyav is those who fear God. And in other books, it's called the faithful. So I was, so are we, are we loving God? Are we fearing God? You've heard of the term God fearing. Does that mean respect? The, the word in my book says reverent. And mine says pious. Okay, but revere, when you revere somebody, there's a little aspect of being a little bit afraid. But also um, respectful, right? Respect, yeah. But this the, uh, translation says, the will of those who fear him, he fulfills and rescues them. The yoshien, the, the root is um, rescue. Redeem, redeem this, those. This who, in yeah. my book it says the Lord will fulfill the desire of those who are reverent 
and hearing their okay. cry will right. save them. I would say those who are in awe, those who are reverent, but fear. Okay. It, it like, I raised my hands up and I get, I did not like that, but that is really the translation. Okay, because um, on uh, line 19, the word um, yureav means the ones who fear. That's exactly what the word says. And I'm, I'm telling you. Now, I was just put off by that a little bit. Okay, I'll just quickly finish. Uh, two more, line 20. Shomer and I et kol ohavav, et kol harshaim yashmi. How about the word? Rashaim. Do you know the word Rasha? Does that ring any bells? Rasha, Mahu Omer. What, what holiday is that from? We have Chacham. Rosh Hashanah? The four sons on Passover. Rasha is the wicked one. Rasha, Mahu Omer. Rasha is the wicked son. Chacham is the smart one. Oh, Passover? <laughs> Passover, yes. The so, uh, this says God watches over those who love Him. Shomer, He watches God. Uh, Shomer and I et kol ohavav. God watches over all who oh, ohavav who love Him. The et kol harshaim and all the wicked. Yashmid, He will destroy all the wicked. Since I don't, is this a way of protecting us, the wicked, the ones who are our enemies? Maybe that's what it means. You have the word um, ahava, which means love, and then you have the word enemies. Yashmi, rashaim, harshaim, and the wicked. So that's, he loves us and he destroys our enemies. All right. So those are the ways in which God helps us. Now, let's. I like to call on you to do reading of a whole line. I've given you um, a lot to think about. So Ashray is a very, um, it's packed with a lot of ideas, especially there's a lot of philosophy in the second part, and there's a lot of hero worship and a lot of you're good, you're wonderful, you're compassionate in the first part. But the second part I find more stimulating intellectually because it's it's got ways in which God assists us, but it's a lot of philosophy here. And I think it's it's deeper than the first part, just saying you're great, you're wonderful, your highness and all the rest. Okay. I need a volunteer, line 11. Let's start reading. It's 10 after so we can read this whole thing. Who wants to read line 11? Linda. Yo Meru. It's you. Yo Meru. Mm-hmm. Right. Yada Beiru. When you have a shva that you sound under a letter, it's like i in if. Yada Beiru. What's the very nice. So, okay. Line 12. Do we have a um a buyer? Going once, going twice, mm. going to Rhoda. Oh, I knew it. Okay. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. I, I could, I, let's see, I've got to make it so I can see here. Okay. Uh, Lachod, Lachodi, this is interesting. Yeah. Lachodi, yeah. Ah. Lachodi, ah. That that uh, yud is right, from right, the right. Okay. sound. Lo, the hodia. The okay. hodia. The hodia. E a. Okay. The ayin has the a under. It. That's a. And the the chirik, the dot, and the yud uh, make okay. this okay. sound. Okay, I, I guess I'm pronouncing the yud. Okay, or I shouldn't do that. Okay, okay. Do it again. Let me hear it again. Okay. Le. The hodia. Perfect. Uh, Levane. Ha adam. Uh, gov, govu rota, rotav. Good. Um, uch, uch vod, hadar, malchuta, mal, malchuto. Very nice reading. 13. Cheryl? Right. Okay. 
Okay, then that's a very important thing that Cheryl said. She remembered what I said. So when you practice this a few times, these words, it'll sound right. If you pronounce it when you're practicing incorrectly, it's not going to sound right to you. So the word is correctly, umem shaltacha. So when you say it, singing it, malchutacha um, malchut kol olamim, umem shaltacha bechol dor vador. And if you really listen, when they do Ashrei, if you go on Shabbat, like I'm going tomorrow, after the Torah service, at the end of the Torah service, they read Ashrei. And in Shacharit, they also do Ashrei in the morning prayers. Umem shaltacha bechol dor vador. And your reign throughout every generation. Good. Helene, will you honor us with 14? Sure. Malchutcha. The next one, the next one. Oh, oh right. So mech Adonai lechol hanof lim zo vezo kef lechol hach fufim. Okay, that's a k. There's a dot. Hak fufin. Oh, hak Hak fufin. Hak is hak hak fufin or hak with a it's hak fufin. That's under the syllable. Hak fufin. Hak fufin. It's okay for fall. Hak fufin. Okay, line fifteen. Sherry Lynn. You're on, you're on, um, Sherry, you're, uh, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry. Okay, there you go. Ene ko elecha yasa veru vi adta notain lachem et. Uh, now that one is Ochlam because there's a funny looking um Ochlam. come on Ochlam the the eto the eto good and they call it like a yes a no ten lachem at Ochlam but eto very nice who would like to do 16 16 going once going twice let's see did everybody Sherry Stein, line 16. Uh, at. Okay, look at the end. That's a special thing. Ach. Potach. Po Poteach. Poteach. At. I don't know. Um, yadecha, poteach et yadecha. Umashapa, umashapa, it's a sin. Umashia, is that a bait or a bait? It's really it's hard to see. No. Okay, a half. Okay. The hall. Call. The hall. He ha. Ruts. Hi. 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 Ruts on. Okay. Anybody have a high? Anybody wear a high? Yeah. I have this I'm wearing today. Mm -hmm. You can see it's a very pretty star. It's got Marcusite. Beautiful. But um, a chai, so if you, you know, sometimes a kid gets a bar of bat mitzvah, they get a chai for their their simcha, and they don't know what, it, what the thing is, but chai. And um, why do we give uh, donations in terms of 18? 
Ah, that's a good question. I mean, I mean, life. Okay, high means life, but that doesn't answer the question. <laughs> Why do we give donations in units of 18? The 18. It's got to do with the Kabbalah. No. High is it 18. Has to, high it means has to high do with 18. numbers. High is 18. Can you explain yeah. that? High is 18. How do you how do you get 18 from high? I have no idea. Add up <laughs> don't okay. the letters have a value? The letters have a value. That's the letters have, have a numerical value. value. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Olive. Okay. So bet and vet would both be two. Olive, bet, gimel, olive, A okay. is five. Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yud. Yud is 10. And Chet, Olive, bet, gimel, dalit, hey, Vav, Zion, Chet is eight. So you're wearing the numerical value of 18. And yeah. The numerical value is, is 18. So that's the, why we give $18. But the word chai means life also. Okay? So that's the reason. Like, l'chaim, to life. But chai means life. Yeah. Okay. So where are we? Um, who was the last person to read? Oh, Sherry. Sherry, what did you read? Okay. And gives to every life its desire, its its want. Okay. Did everybody have a chance to read? Beryl, did you read? No. <laughs> now you will. Are you going to like the first word on 17? You, you know Sadiq. this word. Sadiq. There you go. Sadiq. At a noise. You know that one too. Sadiq Aranoi Vahol Dur Durahav. Durahav. Okay, because a Dalit is like the door. Okay. And Rish is round. Durahav. Durahav. Vahasad. Hasid. 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 like the Hasidim. Yeah. yeah, the Yud and Vav, very good, is Av. Ma a Sav. Sadiq Adonai Bechol Derachav. Bechasid Bechol Ma a Sav. Okay, I think we had everybody so far. We're going to go back. Linda. 18, Karov. Karov, I don't know why. What call? Karov. Good girl. What call? What call? The call. What call? Ash. Asher. Yik. Ra. Ooh. Ooh. Be MS. Yikra Uhu. Like Yuhu. Yikra Uhu. Yikra Uhu. Be Emmet. Right, the Emmet. Uh, any one of you a Yiddish speaker who know Emmet? You know what Emmet means? Sparrow. Emmet. I should because I'm a Torah Emmet, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Sherry Lynn, what does Truth. what does MS mean? Truth. Truth. MS. That's MS, I'm telling you. That's a Yiddish word. And it comes from Hebrew. A lot of Yiddish words come directly from Hebrew. Pluck it right from Hebrew. Like I think I told you once before. Does anyone know the word um abalabusta? Uh -huh. yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what it means? You know yeah, it it's a from? woman that just keeps doing and doing and doing. Okay. Everything. It's like a, a, the word in, in Yiddish, another word is a beria, a person who is a great housekeeper. Yeah. So it comes from ba'alat ha-bayit, the mistress of the house. the house. Hello, is the mistress of the house at home? The ba balabusta is really the mistress of the house. And then it was endowed with another meaning of a mistress of the house who's a real doer and a cleaner and, and, and an organizer. So a balabusta, it came straight from Hebrew. Balabusta, there you go. Okay, so karovat and I look all 
Karov and I lechol korav lechol asher yigra uhu veemet. Sounds like yuhu. Yuhu. Nineteen. Okay. Um, Rhoda. <laughs> she knew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're really lips now, eh? <laughs> we thought it was silent this time. Ratzon yorea re. Just wait a sec. Yore uh, of. Very um, good. But that's the ones who fear. Yore of. Yaase. Vaet. Shav. Okay, Tom. Shavatam. Okay, end of the syllable is shav. 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 Shavatam? Correct. Okay. Um, so let me just look at Shavatam. Okay. Um, uh, Yishma. Mm -hmm. um, Vayoshi aim. Vayoshi aim. Good. Ratzon Yireyav Yaasev Yed Shavatam Yishma Vyoshiyem. You can see the Shma here. He will hear Yishma Shma. Yeah. Okay, line twenty. Cheryl. Uh, Shomer Adonai et Kol Ach. Oh, it's a very little dot there. It's O. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Okay. Um. Kol et Kol. Oh, oh. Havav, oh. Havav, uh, va, so not only is the oh, oh Havav, good. Uh, Vaet, uh, Kol, Har, Shoim, Sha, Harsha, Har, Harsha, Yim, mm -hmm. Harsha, Yim, okay. um, Correct. No, Yash. 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 Okay, then we have very little. Tehila. Tehilat. Adonai. Yedaber P. Tehilat. Adonai. Yedaber P. The, the uh, praise of God will be in my mouth. Um, okay, 22, Helene? 22 is, uh, you just read to Helot. Is that That's correct? That's so right, I'm at, after, after the box. So it's after Leolam Vaed, the last no, line? No, that's the line, that's the line I want you to read, just the, the second from the end. Second from the end. Oh, Tehilat Adonai Yad Berpi. Then the next one. The um, the the Bareich Chol Basher Shar. No, Basar. Yes. Basar. Right. Shame Kad Show. Real long void. Oh, Ed. Forever and ever. Shame is named his holy name forever and ever, and you will bless. And all flesh, basar, is meat. The vivarech kol basar shem kodshelio on the vivarech kol basar shem kodshelio on the I don't know if I ever told you the story. I'll just tell you quickly. I grew up in the Bronx, and my mother would go to the kosher butcher and buy meat. And I was, and he was going, I was trying to figure out, it was big, big letters in the front of the butcher shop until I was an adult and I was in Olpan and I was learning Hebrew. I thought it said kosher butcher. It didn't. It said kasher basar, kosher meat. Uh -oh. Kasher basar, basar is meat, flesh, flesh, flesh. <laughs> I always thought it said kosher butcher. I never, because I couldn't read the second word. So it's vivarech kol basar, all flesh, all humans. Shame could show his holy name. <laughs> and the last line. Who's going to do the last line? Mm. 
Sherry Lynn, last line. <laughs> The the art the Anna the Anna nach new new Nivarech at ya ya Maya ta ne ad o olam Hallelujah. And that's what you're all going to say when we got to the end of Ashray. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. praise, <laughs> praise God. Now, I want to show you something. But the last word is hallelujah. That means you will praise God. yud Hey. Now, we're used to seeing God's holy name, yud Hey vav Hey, And that I can't write on the blackboard. And I can't write the two Yuds on the blackboard because that's supposed to be Shem oh, Kadosh, a holy name. But look at the third word, and I, I pointed this out to myself, and I went, oh, this is, I never noticed it before. Va'anachnu, and we, nevarech, we will, what's the root, baruch? Baruch, and I. What's the root, baruch? Bless. 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 Mm -hmm. And we, va'anachnu, va'anachnu, nevarech, ya, yeah. and I never noticed this until I was preparing for today. It just has the yud hey, and oh, that's yeah. only one half of the holy name. When you look in the Torah, you see yud hey vav hey, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In fact, you have to be careful not to say yihyeh, the word it will be, when you're reading that. It's yud hey vav hey, but this only has the yud hey. There are many different names for God, and apparently yud hey, just the yud hey, yeah. Is one of them. And we will bless God from now until Olam. From now and forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just never caught that until yesterday. I go, Hallelujah. And then it says, Yeah, ah, it's only the Yun Hey. So even that part of God's name. And if you can't write just a hey on the blackboard with that slash mark. So you can't write the hey, you can't write yud hey, and you certainly can't write yud hey, vav hey. All of those are off limits to write on a piece of paper and throw out, or to write on a blackboard for a teacher and erase. Isn't that interesting? I thought that was very interesting. I never noticed it. I've been saying this prayer for years, and I never noticed. I'm just saying, hallelujah. Like in the Hallel. In the uh, in the Hallel service, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I just never entered my brain, and I just thought that was so interesting. And on that happy note, <laughs> so I have now done. I have done away with the wicked. I have praised God, Hallelujah. And guess where the Christians probably get it from from the from the Jewish Bible, Hallelujah. All those Hallelujahs, Hallelujah, Amen, brother. That's that's Hebrew. They are saying Hebrew. And a lot of the customs, a lot of the customs, Christian customs, right from us. It's an outgrowth of the older religion of Judaism, that Christianity has, is, there's just a lot of things. God, Except you know, we don't, you, we don't you need say that. You say that, and we, we're going to Greece, and my husband's been watching films. And we were watching something that was showing part of the Greek Orthodox um, service mm. and how the priest is like swinging around himself. A, uh, he's holding a candle. It's incense. It's incense, which is Havdalah. I mean, yes. that's our Havdalah service. And the, <laughs> they're using that as part of the Catholic service. So I'm yes. regular Catholics. Catholics here yeah, do too. I know. But it's, it's you know, you it is very, It's very interesting. And they talk, of course, about incense. There's a lot of talk about incense in, um, when they're offering the sacrifices. Just think also about the chicken. Mm -hmm. That poor chicken. That, for Yom um, Kippur. Yeah, for Yom Kippur. What do you call it again? I just forgot. Uh, not Shlugan, Kapuras, Shlugan Kapuras, Kaparot, Kapuras. But nowadays they don't do it. Modern, um, modern Orthodox Jews donate money for the poor mm -hmm. instead of taking the chickens. So my daughter once went down to Brooklyn before she became Lubavitch and she saw them actually swinging the chickens around. And I go, 
That's animal cruelty. <laughs> they don't have to, you're, you're killing them, but you're swinging them around. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. swinging them around. So, um, so now that I have had a chance to really go over this prayer, I think I like it better because I myself understand it more having taught it to you and thought about it. I did a lot of thinking about it while I was, uh, you know, preparing and um, My Jewish learning, my Jewish learning um, is the closest I've seen to your, um, when you translated for us, my Jewish learning is right there with you. What is my Jewish learning? Is it a translation? Well, a it's, it's a website that talks about Judaism, but it's got a lot of great stuff on it but yeah, yeah usually the, i thought that was like essays no no no, no. They, they trans, but they yeah but they've got the closest to what you've said yeah thank you well like i said the translations are uh put into poetry which i don't appreciate i i want to know what the real source says because mm -hmm. you you can um, miss you can you can be misguided you can you can translate the thing incorrectly right. or get the wrong idea like those who are bent doesn't mean those who who are crippled I think it means those those and there's different translations but those who are oppressed in need, oppressed yeah in need okay not, yeah. not those people yeah. who are bowing and you can translate things. Um, wrongly you know but I try to when I do this I try to give the the most honest and true translation from the Hebrew that I know like I said it, you can take three different prayer books and you can get three different translations which which tells you right there that there's a disconnect you know and they want it to sound nice in English but the one that I real yeah, but they make it like a poem, but it's a prayer and, and has ideas. The ideas are really profound. And I want to know what, what they were really saying who, who made up these um, tequilas. Carol, so. thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful class these past um, months. Yeah. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Fabulous.